For a dish that'll satisfy even the pickiest of eaters, try my dad's Jinjibian fish cakes. It's got a crispy crust, the perfect bounce and bite, and dynamic umami flavor. We'll start with the secrets to making the perfect fish paste. You gotta First, we'll peel the shrimp. My dad prefers to use large shell-on shrimp for this recipe, but you could use any size of shrimp, peeled or not, as long as they are raw. If you're looking for sustainable seafood options, make sure to reference the Seafood Watch website. Next, we'll wash and devein our shrimp. Then, remove as much water as possible from your shrimps. Slice your fish into quarter inch pieces, then set aside. Roughly chop your fish to mince it further. Next, start mashing your fish with a slap and pull motion with your knife. To level up your confidence in cutting all kinds of ingredients, check out our comprehensive masterclass on knife techniques in the Kanto Cooking Club. To get access, check out club.mewithlao.com. How do you get rid of fishiness? For the shrimp, as a general rule, skip the slicing and go straight to mashing. These are dried scallops that my dad rehydrated beforehand. To rehydrate dried scallops, soak them in warm water for 20 to 30 minutes, or until they're soft enough to break apart by hand. Combine all of your seafood together and mix them into a paste. Then dice up the aromatics. My dad likes to do both the green onions and cilantro at the same time. We have all of these ingredients listed on our blog at madewithlao.com, along with step by step instructions and video clips to guide you as you make the recipe at home. Now we'll add two tablespoons of water into our spice mixture and mix until everything is dissolved. Then we'll add it to our paste. Next, whisk your egg, then add it to your fish paste. 
You'll often see Chinese chefs like my dad mixing fish paste for what seems like an excessively long time. Why do they do this when we're often told when making burgers or meatloaves to not overwork the protein for a fear of a tough and dry final result? Well, it's all about a structural protein in fish and other meats called myosin. When we mix it and make it move, myosin dissolves out of the protein structure that's tying it up and starts getting distributed throughout the paste. The freed myosin travels around, forming a gel to bind the paste. As you mix more, it forms longer links and binds the paste even tighter. You can actually see the linked myosin in well-developed fish paste as they look like sticky, fuzzy fibers. This tighter paste gives us the satisfyingly springy chew in our fish cakes today. We'll add another tablespoon of water here. Emily from Patreon asks, is there a difference between store-bought and homemade fish paste? But if you do manually, then it's not so fast, it's still piece by piece, sometimes. You're on camera! Let's give it to you! Yummy! Let's do it! Hi, YouTube! Hi! I'm just trying to make it fast, I'm trying to make it fast. To create a finer paste, we'll use a spoon to press down on the mixture repeatedly. Now we'll add one final tablespoon of water. If this looks familiar, that's because we've used this fish paste to stuff a variety of ingredients, like peppers or tofu. But here, fish cakes are more than just a filling. Also known as yu bang in Cantonese, it goes by many names as a culinary staple for countless cuisines around the world. Even within China, fish cakes vary from region to region, with fillings based on everything from tofu to ground pork. Our version today is my dad's take on fish cakes, opting for a simple combination of fish, shrimp, and dried scallops. After mixing the paste well for 2 to 3 minutes, we'll set it aside and first create the dipping sauce, which will be the perfect complement to our fish cakes. We'll mix everything together, then set it aside. Now we can bring out a flat bottom wok or pan to pan for our fish cakes. First, we'll want to heat up our pan for about 3 to 5 minutes on high. If you have a non-stick pan, you should not preheat it and skip to putting in the fish cakes. Now we'll grease our hands and tools with oil to prevent sticking when frying the fish cakes. My dad likes to form roughly two ounce balls before placing each of them into the pan. Now we'll turn the heat back on to a medium high and begin frying. Using a flat utensil, press down on your fish cakes to get an even fry. You can use oil on your tool to prevent sticking. 
After frying for about 5 minutes, check the bottom to see if they're ready to flip. They should be a golden brown color. We'll want to keep frying on the other side until it becomes cooked through, or about another 5 minutes. We're looking for an internal temperature around 145 degrees Fahrenheit, or if you're my chef dad, you can also tell by feel. Finally, once they're cooked all the way through, you can plate. For the sauce, we'll add the leftover oil from pan frying to our wok and add the sauce we mixed earlier. We'll turn the heat on high, and as it thickens, stir frequently so it doesn't burn. If your sauce becomes too thick, you can add a tablespoon of water or chicken stock to loosen it. My dad will add both. Now we'll transfer the finished sauce to a bowl and we're ready to serve. YouTube thinks you'll like this recipe next. Let's see if they're right.